Okay, so we're uh, in the middle of doing the dictionary binary search tree, and we looked at um, the contains last time, right? And a few questions came up after class, and I've decided to add a couple of new slides that I haven't had a chance to post yet. But um, by way of explanation, there is some a really good question came up afterwards, and I want to address it now. So this is a new slide that I just put together just a few hours ago. And I think what, it, what we should do is we should see how the, the uh, tree it gets used in the main program. Because a lot of these things we've been sort of not showing, considering main programs for a long time, and I think this is a case where I think it'll, it'll really help. So look, on this slide here, we have the first part of the main program. Now, one, look, look at what's interesting about this. Dictionary BST, angle bracket, and now what do we have? Int, comma, string. So you see that? That int is the what? Type of K. K. Yeah, so that's the f actual parameter that corresponds to formal parameter K. And string is the what? It's like the actual parameter that corresponds to the v. v. Yeah, v. So that's the kv. Are you with me? So that's so that's so it's a dictionary BSD int string, and then it's a little local dictionary tree dict. Are you with me? And then what the main program has is it has a local variable int of type int named key and a local variable of type string named value, because here we are. We're doing this is the actual you know, code the, that's, that's using our dictionary BST. And then we have this, you know, do the response, blah, 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 blah. And if, you, if the user presses C, we do tree dictionary clear. We saw. And now look, look at the code for case I, if you want to do an insert. Insert what integer key, C in key. Insert what string value, C in value. And then it just does tree dict dot insert key comma value. So those key and values are what the user got, yeah, and that got passed to insert. Right? And insert, does insert return a value, yes or no? No, it's void. Are you with me? But now here is what's a little unusual. In the case for uh, contain, so this is case n. This is the code from the main program for case n, uh, which is the key that I had to press to do insert in the demo, right? And it says, search for what integer key and we see in key, so I said, oh, I want to search for like 50, you know, if that was one of the ones I was looking for, the key is 50. And now look what it says. Look how it uses it. It says, if tree, dic tree dictionary dot contains what? Key value. Now, what did it prompt me for? What did it prompt the user for? Just the key. At this point, value has some unknown garbage value. Are you with me? Now, what does contains return? It returns type what? Boolean. It returns type boolean. Are you with me? So, if that if that is in the if that key and value pair is in the dictionary, then contains will return true, and that will be if true. But now, look what it says. It says see out stream the value for key and then it gives the value of key is but now what is it doing the value of value but wait a minute it didn't prompt for value how is value being changed because value is called by reference so when your code sets the value, your code needs to not only return true or false, it also needs to set that value. So look, does everybody see how that works? Before, before we call it, value hasn't been assigned anything. After we call it, it's been changed. Remember when we did that pass ref, pass value? Remember when we did those examples in the beginning? If you do call by value, what would happen? The actual parameter wouldn't change. But if it's called by ret yet, because it manipulates the copy, but this is called by reference. Are you with me? Does everybody see? So val so if you look at the if you look at the parameter list for contains, here let's go here, let's go to the parameter list for contains. Okay, so let's go back to the original signature for for the um, methods for the abstract dictionary. So here in figure 9.2, 
what do we, we see this virtual bool contains. Are you with me? So that it returns a boolean. It's not void. It returns a boolean. But look what it says. Key is called by what? Reference. Constant reference. Mm -hmm. But val is called by what? Called by reference. And what does the post condition say? It says post. If key is found, then what? Val is the associated valid value and true is returned, otherwise false is returned. So th this is called a side effect. When you call a function that returns a value but it also does something on the side, this is what's known as a side effect. And some pure functional programmers believe that it's a sin. <laughs> that functions should just return values and not do anything else. You know, I, so there have been religious wars about you know whether functions should have even have side effects, but I have found that it is in a, in a situation like this. It's just it makes the code so much uh, cleaner. You know, to to have it return a boolean and then on the side do something else, do something in the in the meantime. So anyway, so does everybody understand the mechanism by, of what this is? Now let's go back to the pseudocode for contains. Do you see it was bool contains key val if tree is empty return false else, else if key is less than root value return left subtree contains else if key is greater than root value return right subtree dot contains and then else what is it? Else it's equal. But look, what's one of the things you have to do in your code? You have to do what? Set val. Now why do you have to do that? Because that is the side effect of this method to set the val so that the pro main program can print out what the value is for that key. Are you with me? Yes. Um, on this, what is key and what is root? Now that's a very good question. Because, first of all, this is a pseudocode description of the logic. Are you with me? So we already noted that that first if statement is actually, there's not, you are not going to code an if statement for the first one, for the first test because that's polymorphically dispatched to the empty case. Okay? Now, but now for the other part of it, what happens is, remember, what corresponds to the parameters when you have the visitor method way of doing things? What, what, what used to be a parameter in a visitor method is now a what? No, no, what used to be a parameter in the non-visitor technique way of things, it becomes a what? Becomes an attribute. So when you say, when I say set val, this val means the val that used to be a parameter. So for us, for you as the programmer of the visitor, it is actually what? Here, let's go to the code. It's actually what? The underscore val, you see? Because you see we have key is an input parameter and underscore key is an input parameter and underscore val is an output result. So that's what you need to do. You need to set underscore val. And what is underscore, because it's an output result, what is, what is the type of underscore val? It is a what? It's a, pointer to it's a pointer to a v. Are you with me? It's a pointer to a v. But in terms of like how, like on the next slide, when it says um, if on the pre you mean on, on this on this yeah. the previous when it says if key is less than the root value, root value means is is a key value pair, but it's comparing it to the key. Right, it's right. comparing it to the key of the of key the value pair. Yeah. Right, right. So how would you access that? Host dot root paren because it's a, a method dot key paren because that's a method for the dictionary pair that returns the key value. Yeah. yeah. So you, now, now from here on out you guys, I'm going to be giving you pseudocode. Alright, because we're now, now what we're getting, we're, we are now actually getting to the part where we're actually going to be doing data structures. <laughs> you know, the first goal of this course. <laughs> we've, we've kind of been a little light on the, we've been pretty heavy on the C++ and the design patterns. We've been kind of light on the data structures, but from now on, these data structures, from now on to the rest of the course, that's what the emphasis is going to be. And these algorithms are all 
you know, there, there are, they are all algorithms that I would not expect you to come up with by yourself. And so I will be giving you the pseudocode. Do you see what I mean? To show you the logic and then you will implement it in C++. So like this is like starting now. is kind of like the way it's going to be for the, till the end of the semester. Are you with me? But you see the correspondence? That was a good question. And um, I also want to give you, before we go on, I want to give you some uh, another little tip. I don't have a slide for this, but I'm just going to put it up on the board here. And this is um, how to manipulate dictionary pairs. Okay, so this is always a little tricky, and I think we can do it by way of, of an analogy. Let's suppose we have, let's just do something real simple with in integers, because it, it corresponds to this. Suppose you say int my int, and then you say my int gets 5, and then suppose you have another variable called your int, and you say your int gets my int. So in other words, basically what you want to do is you want to set your int to 5, right? So what you do is you say, oh, okay, so I'll make a new, well, I will declare a new little local variable called my int, and I'll set my int to get 5, and then I'll say your int gets my int. Now that's one way to do it. You, I mean, you probably wouldn't do it this way. What would you do if you want if you wanted your int to get five? You would just do right off the bat what? Gets yeah, just my int gets five. I mean, you would why make a local variable, set it up, and then, or you know, another way you could do this is you could say int my int equals five up here, and then your int gets my int. That'd be another shortcut way to do it, right? I made a little bit shorter, but then even shorter yet, even shorter yet would be would be to do what? here, even shorter yet, would just be what? Your int gets 5. Now look, it's kind of this, I've seen people do this, this kind of thing with dictionary pairs, do this kind of thing with dictionary pairs. Because a dictionary pair could just be a local variable, right? It could be if you wanted it to be. So look, you could, in you know, what corresponds to this would be the following. You could say, you could say, now, this, what we're saying here is this dict pair k, comma, v really corresponds to what over here? It corresponds to int. It is a type. Are you with me? It's, it's, it's like this is a type. And you could say dict pair, and then you could say my pair. Yeah? And then you could say what corresponds to this. How do you set my pair? How do you give my pair a value, some specific value? How do you do that? The way you do it is like this. You would, the way this, you would say this. You would say my pair gets... Now, the way it gets a value is, because how many, you, you know, on, the, on this assignment statement, you got to have just like one thing. How can you have both a key and a, you see what I'm saying? How can you have two, give it two things at the same time? So you have to, yeah, you have to do what? Yeah, well, yeah, you have to say, you, what you have to do, what does the constructor for the dictionary pair do? It has two parameters and it assigns those two things to the, so the way, you know, to the two parts of the dictionary pair. So the way you would do this is you would say, gets dict pair. You, you have to call the constructor. The way you call the constructor is like this. Dict pair, and then we do kv. And then the way we call the constructor is what? Paren, and then you can put something in here like, I think we had something like 10, comma, and then quote, double quote, hippo. Are you with me? You see? And this is like doing this. It's a constant. It's got 10 and hippo and it's a dictionary pair and my pair gets this. And then you could say what? Then you could say what? Your pair gets my pair. And when you do this, that 
that whole, both of those parts of it get copied over within an assignment statement like this. But, you know, why not, why, if you want to do the, oh, and by, and by the way, what, 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 what's another shorter way that you could do this? You could say, dict pair KV, my pair what? Yeah. Yes, dict pair KV, da, da, da. That, that would be. Mm -hmm. You don't use new unless you want to. Yeah, and th that is a very good point. Notice that we are not doing new here. These are local variables. They're not being allocated from the heap. That is a very good point. That was a very good observation. But now, you guys, can you tell me what corresponds to this? You could just say what? Yes. Your pair gets, um, what would it, here, it would be this. Pair KV, and then And this is how you give it. And then if you, if you know what this and this are supposed to be for it, you put this in there and the constructor gets called and it gets it. All right, is everybody clear on that, how that works? Okay, so now let's continue on and um, take a look at the algorithms for doing the other, um, s some other methods. Two other methods, actually, insert and remove. So here in the next figure, we're going to see how insertion works. So obviously, if you have an empty tree and you insert 60, that's going to go in the root of the tree, right? And now, the principle for insertion, what happens if you want to insert uh, 80? Well, the 80 has to be compared with a 60, and the 80 is bigger than, than the 60, so it goes to the right. Yeah, And then if you want to insert on the other side, if you want to insert 50, you compare 50 with 60, and then... 50 is less than 60, so that goes on as, as the left child, right? But the whole point of it is, is that as you add, as you insert more and more and more, where do the insertions take place? They always take place where? On the leaves. On the, at the leaves. That's exactly right. So if we insert 90, what happens is, 90, you compare the 90 with the 60, it's bigger than 60. You compare the 90 with the 80, it's bigger than 80, so in part D we see what happens is uh, it's, it's bigger than 80, but 80 has no right child. It's a leaf. 80's right child is a leaf. So 90 gets inserted as the right child of 80. So it always gets inserted at a leaf. And similarly, if you want to insert 10, 10 is less than 60, 10 is less than 50, 50 doesn't have a, a left child, so the 10 Actually, I said that it got inserted at a leaf. It doesn't actually always get inserted at a leaf because look, what would happen if you want to insert? Yeah, I, I, I take it back. It doesn't always get inserted at a leaf. If we're in part E and, and we want to insert 70, 70 is bigger than 60. So wouldn't it go on the left? It would go on the left of 80, but 80 is not a leaf. Oh, but it has like an empty spot. It has to have an empty spot, yeah. I, I guess that I've been saying it gets inserted at the leaf, but it gets inserted at an empty tree. Yeah, so maybe my example here is not very good because in all of these, they always got inserted at a leaf. If you insert 30, it's going to be inserted at a leaf. You have a question? Um, what happens when you try to insert like the same value twice? That's a good question. The question is, what happens if you try to insert the same value? Now, and here's the thing. In a general search tree, it can have duplicate values, but we are using a search tree to implement a dictionary. And in a dictionary, keys cannot be duplicated. Are you with me? So what we have to code for our insert is if you insert it and it's already in the tree, you got to change the key value pair to be, you have to change the value to be the value. That's how you change the value of, of a, um, of a, of a key value pair that's already in there. You just use insert. There's not another one that says change the value. You just use insert with the same key. Are you with me on that? So yeah. So everybody, are we good? So look, here's the algorithm for insertion. So what the logic is this. Insert is given a key value pair, right? So here's the key value pair, and what we do is we, we obviously, if the tree is empty, 
Well, then that's we can insert it. All right, so we insert root. And by the way, we by the way, what six operations do we have on the host that we can use? You, you guys should not be doing any, you know, new or delete. You shouldn't be doing news and delete and pointers and all that stuff. None of that. You need to use any of that. You can just always do one of six things. What are they? Yes, left root, left root and right. So that's to access. And then to add stuff, what do you do? Insert root. Insert root. It has to be inserted at an empty tree. And I think the other one was, wasn't it set tree? It's set, it is set tree. That's what I thought. Does that just change the root? No, 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 no. Set tree, set tree clears this tree and sets it to the. Do you remember how it set tree does? It may. Shall we? Well, we don't need set tree for yeah, this. We don't, which is why. So yeah. So if you go back and look at set tree, what it does is if you if you do my tree dot set tree your tree. Uh, we had a visual on this. If you go back and review it. We say, if you say my tree dot set tree your tree, my tree is cleared and then it's set to your tree. And then um, and then the one to re, the one to trim a tree is rem root. That's how we that's how you get rid of in a visitor. You just use rem root. Okay. So anyway, the algorithm for the insertion operation is if if the tree is empty, we insert root. We insert root. So that's how we we use insert root method of the host. That key value pair, right? But now, is your code going to say if the tree is empty, yes or no? No, that's going to be polymorphically dispatched to the empty case. So that logic, is, that if is not explicit, that's implicit in the polymorphic dispatch. But on, on the other hand, if you're in a non-empty node, then you, have a, then you have a root value to compare with the key. So else if the key is less than the root value, less subtree dot insert. So, and here you can use the same visitor, right? So you can accept star this, all right, on the left. And then else if the key is greater than the root value, right tree dot insert key value. Else, and actually here's the answer to your question. It's else what? Duplicate key change the value, all right? So what you do is you assign the key value pair in to, to this node, all right? So what you do, and this is how you this is how you set up the key value pair. This is how this is what get this is what this is how you get a key value pair to give to the root. The root can get that. Host.root can get this. Can get this. You just got to put the right things here and here. Does that? Are we good? So the insert, here's the parameter. So the, uh, we have a key and a value that corresponds to our input, and these are called by constant reference. Okay, so they are reference values. Okay, so those uh, correspond to the inputs, um, the input parameters. They were, they were set up by the constructor, so the constructor sets them up here. Underscore key gets key, underscore val gets val. All right. And then uh, this is the code for you to, to finish. And notice, and what do we have in our environment? What's always, what do we have for this environment? The parameter is always what? Host. And in this particular example, the other part of the environment is underscore key and underscore val. Are we good? Now, there's only one more, and this is the tricky one. This is, this now is, um, <coughs> A very interesting algorithm. The question is, how do you remove from a binary search tree? Now watch this. This is really slick. Before we do it, we have to establish this one interesting fact. The fact is that the maximum value of a search tree is in a subtree with an empty right child. Now let's just ponder that for a minute. The maximum value of a search tree is in a subtree with an empty right child. Now look, 
Here is an example. Do you see that this tree is rooted at 30 and then it has 10 on the left and 70 on the right? And then the 10 has a 20 and a 15 and the 70 has a 50 and a 90 and a 40 and a 60 and an 80 and so on. Now tell me, just by looking at this tree, what is the maximum value of the search tree? What is its value? It's what? It's 90. And what do you notice about 90? It doesn't ha it, it has an empty right child. So do you see how to find the maximum value of a search tree? You just keep going what? You just keep going right, 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 right until you can't go right anymore. And the one over on the edge is the what? The biggest one. It's always going to be that way because if there were one bigger, it would have to be what? On the right of that. So you got to just, keep, you, th th that's the proof. We just said the proof. I mean, informally. Are you with me? So does everybody see? And look, what about if there's only one node? What if, there's just, what, if, what if the tree just has one node in it? Well, what's the maximum of the tree with just one element in it? It's that one. Does that have a right child? No. So this works even in all cases. In all cases this works. And if you set up your while loop, you know, so that the invariant is true before you get into the loop the first time, the while loop will work. It'll just never exit. You'll just never have to loop. So it'll even work for in all cases, even in the case where there's only one element in the tree. Now, does everybody understand? Yeah, question? So there could be many other um, subtrees with empty right childs that don't have a max value. Correct. In yeah. fact, if we look at this one, 20 yeah, does not have a right child, but it's definitely not max. Okay. Yeah. But the way to find the max is you, you starting at the root of the tree that you want to find the maximum of, you just keep, you just loop, boom, 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 always to the right until you get the uh, to the rightmost one that doesn't have a right child, and then that's the max of that tree. Okay. Now is everybody clear on that? Okay. So with this fact in mind, here's, here is how you remove <coughs> from a search tree. Now watch this, you guys. This is very clever. What we have here in this next slide is a tree that's rooted at 80. And by the way, this triangle on the right that represents some arbitrary, I mean that that's a sub -tree, that represents a subtree, you know. All right, so this I didn't, didn't want to have to draw a bunch of nodes. So this is a very common abbreviation for a subtree. So imagine that that has a root, you know, that is a subtree, it has a left and a right, and it has a left and a right, and blah, 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 all the way down. All these, and these, and all of these numbers in that triangle tree are, are what? They're all what compared to 80? They're all greater than, yeah. All right? And then 80, and then on the left, we have this, you know, 65, 10, 70, 70, and we can verify. Can you verify that this is a search tree? 70 and 75 are greater than 65, 10, 20, 25, 20, 60, 50, 30, and 40 are all less than 65, and furthermore, 25, 20, 10, those are all greater than 10, blah, 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 blah. So it is, can you verify that's a search tree? Good, we agree. Now let's suppose that we say remove 65 mytree.remove65. What's the first thing we have to do? We have to find the 65. Are you with me? So we got, so now 65 was kind of easy to find here on the top because it was near the top, but in general what would you have to do? Go left, right, right, left, right, blah, blah, until you find it. Yeah? So the first thing is you search for the number to remove. Let's suppose that we search for 65 and there we found it. Now look, you guys, the next step is this. What we do is we find, in part B of the figure, the maximum of the left subtree of the 65. So you see the left subtree of 65 is rooted at? What value? 10. No, the left, the left subtree of 65 is rooted at 10. The left subchild of 65 is rooted at 10. Now, if you just look at that at the subtree 10, what is its what is the maximum value of the tree of the tree rooted at 10? It's 60. 
So we're going to have a local variable called max left, and we're going to loop down until we find where max left is. Now look, you guys, now let's make an observation. Why do we want to find the max left? Because what do we know about the 65 and the 60? First of all, which one do we want to delete? 65. The 65. But the problem is we don't know how to move anything up. You know, it's got two children. On the other hand, if we replace the 65 with the what? 60. With the 60, do you see that the search tree property will still be satisfied. Why is that? Because 60 is the biggest one in the left subtree. So if it becomes the new root, all the other ones except it will, will be what? Less than it. Are you with me? So what do we do? Now what do we do? We just copy Look, we copy the key value pair from max left to what? Where we are. And then, instead of deleting the one where we are, we just do what? Rem root of the max left. And how do we know we can rem do rem root of the max left? Because it, we know it doesn't have a right child. It's just rem root. And why should we repeat all that code? We've already got rem root. Why do we, don't ever do delete. Don't do delete, nil. Don't, just use that as rem root. We know we satisfied the precondition of rem root when we found max left. So here, boom. And then, oh, by the way, so what will that do? If you rem root of max left, what will that do? That'll bring the 50 up, right? So that'll bring, and so the 50 comes up, and boom, there's the 60. So that's how you remove from a search tree. So here is the pseudocode. So this is the algorithm for, removing, for the remove operation. Now here again, the first if is going to be what? Polymorphic dispatch. Okay. But how do you remove key value? So here's what you have to do. If the tree is empty, return false. So then that's just the empty case. Otherwise, what is our environment? We have a, we have a host that has a key, and we have the key and the value as our attributes, right? I mean, they are, they are parameters here, but they are attributes in the visitor. Are you with me? So this is the logic as if it were not the visitor pattern, yeah? So, uh, else if the key is less than the root value, then left subtree dot remove key val. Else if key is greater than root value, right subtree dot remove key val. Else, what do we know? We found that 65. Are you with me? And now, here's the thing. Um, so what we have to do is um, we, now, now why do we have to set val? For the same reason that we had to set val in that contains one, right? Because this is a call, remember that when it returns something, it tells you the value that got returned. I don't know if you remember that from that. When we, when we returned it said, oh, it was returned with a value of, I think, we re, I think it was the root. I think it was hippo in the, in, the, in the demo, right? Okay, so we set that value. Now, if the left, now first of all, we want to find the maximum of the, the maximum of the left child, right? But in order for that to happen, the left, this root, this node has to have a left child. But if it doesn't have a left child, now we can just rem root right here. Are you with me? We can just rem root right here and we're done. But now we've guarded. Now we know that it has a left subtree, right? So it says else, find the maximum of the left subtree. Now this code right here is literally <coughs> cut and paste from the C++ solution. So this is how you set up that max left. So just copy this into your code for this. It's by tree CSV, dictionary pair KV, star max left. Now what does that mean max left is? It is a what to a what? It is a pointer to a what? To a tree. It is a pointer to a tree. And as it goes down, what's it doing? It's pointing to each one of those trees. See if we come down to here? and we here in part C of the figure, 
it's going to start at the it's going to start at the 10. So first it will point to the to the tree 10, and then it will point to the tree 25, and then it will point to the tree 60, and in the end, max left is a pointer to the tree to the tree that's rooted at 60. Yeah. Does it, but anyway, does, any, does everybody see it's a max left is a pointer to a tree, and it points to the 10, then it points to the 25, then it points to the 60, and then the loop terminates. And then, so, that, so that's file, and then you've got to figure out how to write the test. The right child of max left is not empty. Well, max left is a pointer to a tree, right? And so that tree has what? That tree is a host, it has, yeah. Okay, that tree, okay, so, so while the right child of max left is not empty, so max left is a pointer to a tree anyway, and so you can call, you can call the uh, uh, empty, is empty, uh, actually, it's use the is empty um, convenience function because that was a plug-in. Is empty is not one of the six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yes, and then remove this root. That's removed, and then return true. So, and the visitor, you set, you know, etc. So here's the here is the environment of your remove is. You have a key and a val and a found, underscore key, underscore val, and underscore found, underscore key is an input parameter, underscore val. Here, here again, that's, that's our, um, well, we set, yeah, we, we, we set that value, and then the constructor uh, initializes the key, and then there's the, uh, oh, now there's one extra thing to do on this one, and that is the result function has to do two things. The result function returns a bool, the, 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 this is um, uh, the result function returns a bool, but also notice that it val is called by reference. Okay, so that takes a, this isn't just a straight, you know, return underscore result. You have to set something first before you return underscore result. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, are we good to go? Here again, I think if you can get this thing to compile, it'll work. <laughs> Getting it to compile with all those ampersands and stars is, can be a little tricky. All right, good deal. See you on Monday.